Hey. Welcome back to the zone. The pain zone. The house of pain. Uh, what's this rank? Oh, the shit that kills me. Oh. Some of these bikes look looking pretty good though. Shame they're all planning to kill me. I mean... I mean... I'm just gonna get this, this pan of garlic right here. It's looking real nice. Mm. Yeah. I was researching a lot of stuff recently for uh, motorcycles uh, all over Asia, specifically Vietnam. A um, bit about Thailand. It's uh, a strange process for foreigners to get a, a license, but it's pretty doable, actually. Uh, really doable. I... What was I going to say? Uh, I... The, the course, the uh, test is literally, you know, if you've ever watched the Top Gear Vietnam special where he's, they're doing this thing where they drive a moped around a figure eight, that's pretty much it, and then going around a corner uh, doing a U-turn or something. And you're thinking that's like two parts of the Mod 1 test in Britain, and then two parts that I did okay, and like slaloms and shit I can do in my sleep as well. It's like... Hey, if you, that's all it is, I'm going to be doing that pretty quickly, if I go there. Because I'm starting to think, um, yeah, my resolution at wherever I go next is to actually just get my license ASAP, and then just stay in that country and like get a cheapish bike, just mess around with it, you know, modify some stuff, change some stuff, you know, like improve it, fix it. Uh, like in places, you know, as it goes, and just really make it my own thing. Perhaps go down a cafe racer or brat style look, or like something like that. Would be pretty nice. But we'll see. I mean, like the roads may demand a more scrambler kind of thing because of the uh, because of the roads. But it depends on where I am, you know. Say if you're in a major city in Asia, in Southeast Asia, it's probably got decent enough roads for like. A more like roadish bike, but so you know, depends on how far out you're gonna go and where you're gonna take the bike. I mean, you know, I like the idea. I like the idea of fiddling around, having a few bikes, you know, just a few cheap bikes and just messing around doing different things with them. I've, that's always been a fantasy of mine. Not an expensive load, like oh, I need a Daytona, I need a Panigale. Uh, I need like a, you know, ninja or something like that. Uh, no, nothing that crazy. Just a few like low CC mess around, like cheap Japanese style models, like a couple of cheap Hondas, uh, cheap Suzuki, you know, like that's like they're like in varying styles, and there's loads of parts for them, and you can just kind of fuck around, and replace shit, and like fix shit as they go wrong, and just like. You know, have several options, so if one breaks, you've got another option, and it'd be fairly cheap, and it'd be fine. It's always been a dream of mine, small dream. But I'm always quite a small dream kind of person, because I was just like, nah, life's too complicated, man. You have all of this worry about shit. It's not like I'm aiming low, it's just I want to have a peaceful life, you know. Quiet life, simple life. And I want to teach myself how to, you know, do a lot of bike repair shit myself and then be able to, like, customize stuff on my own, you know, just gradually build that skill base just to get the hang of things and seems like the best way to do it, really. Although, I probably very quickly have to learn the Thai or Cambodian or Vietnamese for, like, help, I bricked it again. What's electronics? <laughs> like... Why are all the electrics broken again? Is it because I touched the wires? Ugh, electrics. But you know, nothing, a few YouTube tutorials can't help. Oh, 
and you know, give it a few years and a few qualifications and experience later, and I'll be earning the big bucks. Hopefully, I can probably afford some more expensive bikes that I'll be too scared to touch and break. <laughs> That's the plan. Maybe by the sea. That'd be nice, wouldn't it? Just by the sea. Me and my cat and some bikes, cafe racing by the sea. That's all right. That's it. That's a good dream for me. I don't need much else, man. Maybe if I ever get into some money, I open my own coffee shop or something. I don't know. <laughs> Never fall that far. I'm only four. These guys are like real booking it. Look at them up there, like ants on speed. Guys, and I just I feel like I'm driving really slow, but then I put my foot down and uh, the bike comes out from underneath me, so I'm going around a corner. I'm kind of playing it safe. Yeah, man. Catch these guys. Am I just bad? It just feels like, you know, I'm not getting any nearer to them. Oh. 
Yeah, so like uh, a lot of the tests in the southeast seem pretty easy from what I've seen and seem a lot fairer, you know? A lot of these countries that I look at in uh, some parts of Asia, they're super like, nah, we're just not going to let you on the road. We're going to try our hardest to make sure that no foreigners have a license and aren't on the road because you're the reason crimes happen and you're like, great, love this institutionalized racism you've got here. So in any other country, there'd be a fucking campaign about this, but you shoot those people, so, <laughs> you know, and you're just like, oh my god, like, and like, you know, some of them is really expensive instead, so it's like only a small percentage of people are rich enough to be able to actually get a license, I've heard that it's very expensive in Japan from my research. And they're like, no, you need to have a minimum of this many lessons, and it has to be like this, and it's like, going to be very expensive and exclusive, and bikes are expensive and exclusive, and you're just like, oh, doesn't sound fun. I want to go to Japan, but I think it's more a tourist thing for me personally, because there's a lot of, you can't do this, and you can't do this, and you can't do this, and you won't get a rental with this, and you... Most rentals don't accept pets, and if you're allowed in the fucking rental, though, they'll get pissy, and if you don't recycle, they'll come and complain, and, uh, <laughs> you know, it just sounds like a bit like Society of Curtain Twitches. Oh, he's not doing it the right way, I'm not sure about that. Sounds a bit like that. Yeah, I'm alright. <laughs> like, like listening to my medals without having the neighbors complaining about me saying, Oh, your music's too loud. Please wear headphones. Stop enjoying music for a medium that we have to listen to. It. Japan sounds nicer aside from that, it's just that, that kind of like, I think that's more something that people who reside there would encounter otherwise, you know. Well, always wanted to just go there and see everything. Got really interested in Osaka for a long period of time. And it's really just because of the name, and like, you know, I kind of saw it in the Yakuza game, I was like, huh, that looks cool, I like the bridges, it looks nice. And then I tried a Sarkin food at some place in Hong Kong, I claimed it was a Sarkin style, and I was like, oh yeah, that's pretty good, like, you know, it sounds it tastes pretty good. And it's right near um, Kyoto. Oh, that's cool. That would make a good tourism spot. And, like, then, you know, I was like, oh, yeah, that would be cool. And then, for some reason, I started looking into Yokohama as well. I, I don't know why. I just like the sound of it. The name. Just... I like all of the O's and the K's. But for some reason, Tokyo just feels really mainstream. <laughs> I like this. Oh, everyone goes to Tokyo. So I will not go to Tokyo. I've been to Tokyo once just to see it. Yeah, you know. Got to see some part of Japan at some point, right? So many of my friends are like, oh, if you went and lived in Japan, we'd come and see you at some point. But if you don't go to Japan, we basically won't come and see you ever in Asia. Because it's like, that's the only place that they really care about. And it's like, well, you know, I don't live to, to please you people, so... I don't really want to go live there particularly. I mean, if it was a more easy option or like a decent paid job showed up in the future, maybe. But right now, I don't think I'm in the right position for that. So a lot of people going, oh, yeah, you should do that. And I'm like, eh. Oh, we could just go on holiday there, both of us, and meet each other there. So there's that. There's uh, Japan. It's weird, because I felt, felt like a lot of my friends would want to come meet me if I was living in, say, Thailand, or uh, uh, Vietnam, or something like that. 
uh, or Korea or something, but like, and they all just a bit like, nah, they don't sound as fun as Japan. I'm like, mm, I think Japan is one of those places where it's fun to be a tourist there, but then gets a little more like, oh, when you're there as like a actual, you know, you're actually living there. Because I find that a lot of cities that are very tourist heavy. They aren't actually that fun to live there as like a resident, but that's just my opinion from my experience. Because Hong Kong was okay, but felt a bit tired after a while because it's just the tourist shit and restaurants and stuff. There's not really much else there. I mean, there is, but though you know, it's kind of Cantonese only, and I don't speak Cantonese, so it's a hard language. Yeah, it's kind of frustrating when you can live in all these fascinating places and all your friends are like, uh, yeah, we won't come visit you if you don't go to this place specifically because I only have care for this place. Because it's a bit like, well, yeah, I'm not going to go do that personally speaking, you know? Sounds dumb. It's a shame because they miss out on some really cool places in the world because they just don't want to like go anywhere but these a couple of places. It's fine. I mean, you know, I've always been a bit weird about people coming on holiday to where I live and work because they're like, wow, it's so different. And you're like, dude, it's just like where I live. <laughs> like, you know, it's really not that exciting. The magic tends to leave a place when you live there all the time and you see everything all the time and they're like, oh, this is amazing. And you're like, dude, it's just a fucking convenience store. <laughs> like, you know, but it's so different from Britain. It's like, yes, because it's not Britain. <laughs> like, you know, like, it's not that exciting, dude. Uh, where's the end? There we go. AI trying to correct my bullshit. <laughs> Yeah, so, you know, like, when I went to several places in uh, China, a lot of my mates, or a couple of them, said to me, oh, well, we'll come and see you in that place, maybe, before the COVID has happened. But I was like, dude, it's like the equivalent of coming to Bracknell. <laughs> like, there's nothing here. It's like, there's nothing in this town that's really that interesting. It's really boring. But there's no tourism. It's just all a bit, like, run down shitty malls no offense to Bracknell yeah it's kind of just like it's not a tourist hub and it's not very exciting or different it's just a thing like maybe Qingdao would have been nice but like you know or Shanghai or something but I, I mean I don't, I don't live there so thing. Uh, I feel like I should have gone and lived in Shanghai, to be honest. Shanghai would have been nice. I went there once on holiday for like two to four days. It was really great. I actually really enjoyed it. A lot of people are like, really? It's kind of boring and international, isn't it? And I'm like, well, yeah, but like, it's got, it's got some cool stuff. I liked it. Uh, but like a lot of people shy away from big cities in China because it's just so busy. Lots of people living in China, no cities, there are billions of people, man. Especially like Hong Kong and shit, it's just seas of people. Shanghai is nice, though. Shanghai is nice. Qingdao was nice. If I had to recommend somewhere to live, it'd be somewhere like that or somewhere near the coast in the south where it's a little more warm. Like, um, 
Uh, a lot of people say Hangzhou is quite nice, Nanjing is quite nice. If you have to go and live in China and you you want to like go and live and experience China, somewhere like that, or somewhere in the Yunnan province, or like uh, somewhere like um, uh, a lot of people say uh, Hainan Island and Haiko is really nice. But it's like you're going to be really lucky if you get any like um, uh, jobs out there because it's basically a huge a huge tropical island. And it's like, as a result, everyone wants to go and work there, as you can imagine. So it's like, you know, you're trying to compete, out-compete people who are willing to get take massive pay cuts and go to really high-stress, prestigious uh, institutes to just because it's on the beach all the time and it's really nice and there's subsidized uh, accommodation for them. That guy nearly fucking killed me. Watch out for these AIs. They'll take over, man. Guy, <sighs> man, look at this. Look at this. Yeah, uh, what else was I going to say? Yeah, there's parts of China that are pretty nice. They're, they're, uh, the thing is, China is a massive country. Every province and stuff is, is kind of like states in America, where it's like, you might as well be in a different country with a different way of being. Everybody's different in each area, and they have different attitudes as a result, and different foods and styles of speaking and dialects and shit. And like some things, like you know, straight up, like things change that are like really, really important and, and integral. And they're like, oh yeah, you can't do this here, or like motorcycles are banned here, or like you know, you can't do this here, or you have to do this here. And it's like, you know, straight up laws change and cultural like unwritten laws change, and it's like something that you have to really pay attention to. Um. So, you know, if you get sick of one part of China, very often it's like another province of China will probably be less annoying, but it's just that the overarching problems for me were, like, nationwide. Like, I can't get money out of the country, or I'm kind of sick of just the way things are in generic kind of style, like, you can't do this, and you can't do that, and you can't do the other, and it feels like a lot of the time there's a lot of calm, and it's nationwide that the internet's blocked and you have to VPN everything and it's uh, oh, it's just a pain in the ass. Also, I've been going more and more north and I hate cold weather. Like, my big thing is I hate cold weather and I like living in quite tropical climates, although it does stress me out when I get very hot in the summer and I'm trying to work with screaming kids and it's like baking hot. So I have to wear long sleeves to cover my tattoos. So it kind of does get stressful, but it's like at the same time, it's not that big of a deal. Um, it's better than freezing your fucking tits off because literally these places, they act like they're in tropical climates. Ugh. They act like they're in tropical climates all over China. And then they're like, oh, you wanted your central heating on this year. Oh, yeah. Um, oh, yeah, that's going to be expensive, man. Um, yeah, I don't know about that. Uh, you, you'll have to pay quite a lot of money to get that on. And then it's just on. There's no thermostat. It's just on. And your house is sweltering hot on the times that it's on. And then it's like off. And it's freezing cold on the shower won't heat up. And it's like snowing outside. You know, it's like very limited control, very like last minute installation, like they weren't planning on putting it in at all. Some parts of like China, and it was the same in New Zealand too. Some parts of New Zealand, or most of New Zealand, even the South Island and stuff like that, they're just like, oh yeah, it snows down here. No, there's no central heating. Fuck you. <sighs> See how it's you? Oh, I got second then. I don't think I'd beat this. I got third or something. I broke it. 
Yeah, for, oh, that was a good calculation. Yes. Oh, yeah. So that was about half an hour, so we'll just do a little bit more. Yeah, it's, uh, like, I just want to change. Like, I have, like, these really big plans that kind of fluctuate because my life has to exist in between all of this mad travel, and my whole life can't just be, like, whimsical travel with no saving of money, you know what I mean? Like, I actually have to do a job. I'm not going to get a pension from various random jobs I do all over the southeast. So I have to plan everything myself. Um, yeah. Yeah. Is there much else to do here? Am I blind? Just this, uh, I don't want to do that. Uh, what are we missing on this? to head. We'll try it. Uh, yeah, so originally my plan when I first got out here, I think circumstances were a little different. I was just like, I'm going to spend about five years in Asia, see what happens, just all over Asia, dotted all over. Um, then, you know, if I find somewhere I really like, I'll stick around for a little while longer in that country. If I, like, find somebody and I, like, you know, end up setting them down with them or whatever, I guess I'll just stay there. And then, like, as time went by, it, it elongated. So even places that I don't really care about, I was staying for a long time, you know? Like a real long time. And it just became a case of, like, obviously every contract's like a year to two years. Um, so there was that. But, like, it's also just, you know, it becomes convenient that when you're in a country to just change jobs or to stick at the same job and stay in that place, you know, while, while, while I'm here kind of mentality. And it meant I was stuck in, well, I was stuck. So I stayed in China for, like, much longer than I anticipated because I had no intention by about year two of living in China uh, of actually ever settling down here or staying here because it's just not a conducive idea. And uh, yeah, uh, I can do it, I can do it, I can do it. Yeah, easy. Violin for everybody. Um, yeah, and it just got to the point where I was a little bit like, why am I still here kind of thing? And like I was looking at other places and like since 2018 I've been looking at other places like Japan, Korea, uh, like Taiwan, Thailand, all over. Even Nepal, when I went on holiday, I had to look around and I was like, do they need English teachers? And they're like, yeah. <laughs> but it's, you know, not very many and like, the international schools are hiring and you're like, oh, cool, great. And they're like, yeah, but, you know, and it just feels a bit like not as common as what my impression was. Let's try and do this properly. Time attack. Wait, what is B tag? Well, we'll try this one, and we'll try that one. So, um, yeah, um, I was planning on basically have been living in, like, most of the southeast. In fact, in my first year, I said to myself, you know what, I'm just going to go live in, like, Vietnam after this and just get a bike and just drive around the southeast, not realizing the massive danger of me just driving around the southeast on a motorcycle it's like you can straight up get fucking killed on the borders <laughs> or like in prison or 
forced to take bribes and shit, forced to pay bribes to, for safe passage out of each country. It's just, you know, go look after yourself. And, uh, yeah, like, you know, it's amazing how fast time flies when you're doing these kind of jobs and you are moving around a lot, but it's moving around a lot in China and Hong Kong, where you're essentially just staying in a very, like, a specific area. You're not really going out of that area, and it's kind of sticking to that area, you know? You, you know, you're not going anywhere further than that, so it's like... Yeah, so my, uh, the original plan was basically five years in Asia, or like five to ten years in Asia, then I was just going to quit the whole of Asia if I just still didn't feel like it was right for me, and then just say, fuck it, and any money I earn from that, go to South America and Central America, teach over there, and just mess around and eat tacos and drink tequila and drive motorcycles over there until I hit my, like, 40s or 50s. Um... If I'm not dead by that point, my plan was essentially then to retire in Europe, maybe Germany, South Germany, or like maybe South Italy, depending on how much money I have, or if I'm alive or the planet's still here by then. And, um, yeah, that was essentially my, uh, my overarching plan, then at some point it all fucked up. And now it's like, now spend the next five years living in Asia that's not China, <laughs> and, uh, you know, gradually, like, my list of countries that I'm not, you know, I'm going to live in diminished, and my countries that are holidays only increased as time went by, and I can't see that changing, but, like, if I liked, say, Vietnam or Thailand, I would just go and live in Vietnam or Thailand for the next two to five years and just live around that, you know, around that country, you know, just up and down it. And just, you know, move occasionally or just try and stay in the same place and say, well, you know, I've kind of done that. Take holidays elsewhere and go, yeah, do I really want to go and do it all over again over there? Maybe, yeah, maybe no, and just go from there. Maybe spend some time in Japan. If I don't feel like Japan's ever going to be for me, then just not bothering. And, uh, you know, just going there on holiday. Then doing the whole South America thing, if I feel like it. But then I started research and I was like, ooh, it's pretty dodgy down there. Ooh, I don't think I'll be driving a motorbike just around, you know? I just drive it around and, you know, same with the Southeast, really. You can't just keep on driving it and not get stopped by somebody who's going to try and fucking either nick your bike, murder you, or bribe you for money. Some of those people being cops. <laughs> so, you know, you just got to be, gotta be kind of careful with that shit and just, uh, just make sure it's all fine, you know. Maybe Malaysia, maybe Singapore, because there's some well-paid jobs there that I need to up my uh, CV <laughs> if I'm going to get those jobs. Um, then, you know, just go from there, move on. I kind of still like Mexico as an idea, or like somewhere like that, you know. Uh, somewhere pretty like, you know, just see how things take me. To be honest, some of these countries look so great from, like, the scenery that you're like, oh, man, I'd love to live there. But then you hear about actually living there is very difficult for whatever reason. Like, there's crime or there's just not many jobs or, like, they're kind of racist or they're, like, you know, there's just, you know, there's just nothing you can do over there or it's very hard to get a visa or something. And you're like, oh, 
That's a shame. But we'll see. I mean, plans are there to change. I was never one of these sturdy file effects types, you know, that you meet sometimes where they're like, by this date at this time, I will definitely be this and I will be married and I will have had a child. And I was never like that. No firm rules. Just if I like it here, I'll stay here for a while. If I don't like it here, I'll move on. If it's inconvenient for me to move on, I'll stay for a bit. Stuff fluctuates. I should have just left though. I should have just left after my job in Qingdao because I would have averted this whole COVID disaster, but I wasn't ready. I wasn't planning anything, you know? That was the problem. I just bought a cat. He wasn't vaccinated and I was like, oh, I'm gonna go live in Japan. Then I found out that that's really hard. And then I just didn't think to check anywhere else. I should have just gone and been better prepared and said, fuck it, I'm going to Vietnam straight after this. Would have averted this whole COVID disaster of being stuck in China for like an excessive amount of time, but like it would have been stuck somewhere else, but you know, at least it would have been different. Different stuff. Fucking flies touching my hands, Jesus. So yeah, you know, we'll see what happens. I really like the look of a lot of Southeast Asia. I think I could spend a good few years just hanging out there and it'd be fine, you know. Uh, no rush, not like I need to go anywhere. Be nice to retire in Italy, but, it's, you know, I actually have to have money to do that. And uh, I'm not sure if it's going to be easy for Brits to get in there post-Brexit and like uh, what the DVO will be in the future, buying property over there. I like the coast and I like warm countries. You may have noticed a theme is essentially Italian coast, Vietnamese coast, Thai coast, Malaysia, which is essentially a bunch of islands, therefore a bunch of coasts, you know? mates he worked for a long time in ooh I don't know what that says no idea oh it's not up on this save my TV is sending me a message I don't know what the fuck it says it's just covering the screen right now saying da 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 in Chinese I'm like great okay not send me like ads probably turn off my TV now so You've been on this for too long, it needs to shut down power saving. One of my mates was working in Spain for a while and he had a few mates in places like Valencia and stuff and he uh, said, oh yeah, I used to work over there teaching for a long period of time and it was really good. He wants to open a place there, but I never really fancied Spain myself. I mean, I've been to Spain a lot on holiday because I'm British, so of course I have. But like, uh, it's just something about it that I've just always gone, eh, Barcelona maybe, but it's very expensive there. And, uh, you know, it's a hassle for me, a hassle for, to get my cat into the EU all of the time. And like, a lot of like, lo lower salary for a lot more stress, a lot more prestige and expectation. And you just like, I don't know if I want to handle that shit, you know. 
VSP2. Uh, yeah, it's just a lot of like handling shit that I don't want to handle. Uh, but he was like, no, nah, man, if you want a job, you could just come over and work at my place in Valencia. And I thought, if there's anything worse than working for a boss you hate, it's a boss you know who's your mate. It's like rooming with people you know. It really teaches you more about that person than you really wanted to know. <laughs> like, you know? And it's like, you feel like you can't even be like, oh, my boss is a fucking cunt and have that conversation, you know? You can't bitch about your boss in the bar because he's your mate. Like, I had this recently where, like, the person I was working with were really nice and really wanted everything to work out and the kids really liked me and I really liked it all and it was, just didn't work out. Like, straight up just didn't work out because, you know, we're all plan I'm planning on leaving. They were planning on keeping me here for two years and I was like, there's no way I'm staying I'm static in any part of China for two years on top of the year of downtime we've had because of COVID. So three years. I didn't spend three years in Hong Kong. So, you know, you didn't spend a whole two, a whole two years there. And, um, you know, I was just sat there like, really, you know? And they were like, yeah, well, if you change your mind, you're always welcome. Oh, yeah, we always think you're a great guy. We're really hoping that you'll stay. If it all falls through with your plans on moving out to the southeast or like to like Japan or whatever. You just tell us and all this shit. And I was like, oh, that's nice. That sounds fun. But, you know, you can't be mad at them because they're nice people and they mean well. And that's actually kind of frustrating because it's like you kind of want to have that like, you know, you don't, you don't want to cause fights, but you kind of want to have that mild enmity towards your boss because it's like, then you have an excuse and you like don't feel like like for me it's like for me it's like I don't I want an excuse if they think I'm bad at my job you know like oh yeah you think I'm bad at your job yeah I'm gonna be bad at my job because I fucking hate this company and it's a big chain corporation and down with the system it's not because I'm bad shut up <laughs> whereas if you know you're disappointing somebody that you actually like, oh, I don't want to disappoint that person. You, you, you know, you don't feel like, oh, well, you know, fuck this job, fuck you people, I don't care, I just want to leave. I want to get out of here and I want to ruin everything, fuck you. Oh yeah, fuck this big chain system. If it's not got that and they're nice people and they're just trying their damnedest to keep a company running, you're just like, oh, <laughs> well now I feel terrible. Oh, I'm not gonna get this on the first lap. Hey, this time trial is not too snippy. I cannot do these time trials. Right, we're gonna have to have to shut up for a bit. Like, it doesn't have the power to throw itself out from underneath itself as much as the more modern ones do. You still can put some tire down. is recording LPs and like editing them lately and it's like such a pointless hobby <laughs> it's like you know it's like one of those I'm doing it purely for the lols like I'm not doing it for like views and thinking oh this is going to be a oh shit 
this is going to be a monetizable thing or anything like that. I don't believe in that shit. Uh, also, I'm not popular enough. So I'm just like, yeah, man, it doesn't matter. I'll just do it for the lols. But like, holy shit, is it some of it just like, why am I doing this to myself? I've got other shit to be doing. <laughs> you know, like, I've got books to read. I've got films to watch. You know, I've got like writing to do. I'm never going to do this. Look at this shit. It's the same time as before. That's slightly better. I'm not good at driving the bike. Yeah, there's a lot of like editing and like I'm having to go through a lot of stuff because, like, like I was saying, it's a lot of electrical noise. So I'm going through in real time in automation and going through all the pops and clicks and button presses that are too obtrusive that would just blast out the speakers and clip everything to shit and just, you know, automating them out one by one because garage band's not very good with the noise reduction shit. So, um, you know, I'm just doing that myself and, like, adding all of this processing and like everything is very arduous and very slow as a result and it's like it's, it's kind of painful <laughs> I have to admit it's kind of painful hey, is this the end already or have I got another whole turn yet oh, I don't think we're going to make this no sorry there's two chicanes yet big hairpin and chicane again See, 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 see. Ooh, this is not going to be a good one to end on. It's going to be a loss. I haven't really got any wins really this time. Just like loads of thirds and shit. Oh, I did do the. Did I win the monster one? I did, didn't I? Nah, there's no way. I had a better time than this when I came up to this chicane last time. Nah, it's north way. There was no way. Oh, maybe. No. No, 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 no. So close, but like, still no good. Look at this. Got a total two seconds off that last lap, but it's still miles away from what it needs to be, really. It's a shame. Bad end. Oh, well. If we've learned anything from this LP, it's that I clearly can't win them all. <laughs> not very good at these games when you start LP and you start to realize you might not be as good at video games as you once thought you were because now people are like you're recording it and people are watching quote unquote you know eh. just end it there I guess